Now, let's move on to the next problem. Now, bar AB is supported by a frictionless inclined surface at A and a 7 over 8 inches diameter pin at B. And then that's in double shear. Now, we have to determine the shear stress in the pin when the vertical 2000 pound force is applied. And then we are just to neglect the weight of the bar. And so that means that we'll only consider this force. Now first, let's write our external reactions. Now at A, we have a smooth inclined surface. And so this will have a normal reaction perpendicular to the surface. However, since it is smooth, we don't have any frictional force. Only a normal force. And so this is, let's make sure this is perpendicular. And then this is the normal reaction at A. Now first, let's make sense of our angles. Now let's zoom in and then let's draw a vertical line here and also a horizontal line. Now if we'll extend this one and also this one, we will be able to see that this is a triangle and then this is perpendicular. Now if this is 30, this must be 60 degrees because this is a right triangle. And then we know that this is perpendicular with the surface. And so if this is 90, then that means that this is 30 because again, this is perpendicular. That's why the sum of these angles must be 90. And so let's just draw a horizontal broken line here. Now at B, we have a vertical reaction and a horizontal reaction. Now let's label this as Bx and By. Now ideally, I will first take moments about B because at B, I have two unknowns, Bx and By. And so let's take moments about B. Now first, let's define our distances. Let's extend this line and then we'll draw a broken line here. Now, this distance is tan cosine of tan because notice that this is also a right triangle. And then our hypotenuse is tan. So this is tan cosine of 10 degrees, which is approximately 9.85. And then our vertical distance is tan times sine of 10 degrees, which is approximately 1.74. Now taking moments about B, I have minus 2000 because that will cause a counterclockwise rotation times half of 9.85, which is the moment arm. This is 9.85 divided by two. And then let's resolve NA into components. Now this is, let's say, NAY, and then this is NAX. Now our NAY is NA cos 30. Now you have to be careful here because our angle is with respect to the vertical. And so this is actually our adjacent side. And then this is our opposite side, which is equivalent to this one. And so our NAX will be NA sine 30. And so here we have plus NAY or simply NA cos 30 times the moment arm, which is 9.85 feet. And then we have minus NAX times 1.74, which is NA sine 30 times 1.74. And so now we can solve NA minus 2000 times 9.85 over 2 plus x cos 30 times 9.85 and then minus x times sine 30 times 1.74 that's equal to 0 and so our na will be 1285.84 and then this is pounds and so now i can already solve by and bx we can sum up vertical and horizontal forces so summing up vertical forces we have by minus 2000 plus Na cos 30. This is equal to 0. However, we know that Na is equal to 1285.84. And then summing up forces horizontal, we have Nax or Na sine 30 is equal to Bx. And then this is also 1285.84. And so our By will be 2000 minus 1285.84 cos 30 which is 886.43 and then our bx is 1285.84 sine 30 and so that'll be 642.92 and so now we already have what we need again we are to determine the shear stress and so that'll be tau is equal to the force which is the resultant at b now our rb is just square root of bx squared plus by squared and so this is 642.92 and then squared plus 886.43 squared divided by pi over 4 times d squared. However, take note here that our pin at b is in double shear and so we will multiply this by 2. And so solving d we have square root of 642.92 squared plus 886.43 squared 
divided by 2 times pi over 4 times d squared. Now, our diameter is 7 over 8. So let's change this one into 7 over 8. This is 7 over 8. And so our shear stress will be 910.53. And then this is pounds per square inch or PSI.